Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Patty G Show. I am your host, Patty G, here with Southern Kofi. Horatio stopped in. We're going to talk all things small business, getting started, and how to grow a brand from nothing and how to get creative during COVID. So thank you all for tuning in. Our show is sponsored by Alvarez Construction. Thank them so very much for coming on board as an official sponsor of the Patty G Show. We are welcome and happy to have them on board. So without further ado, Horatio, welcome. What's up, man? To How the you Patty doing? G Show, man. I'm glad we're able to make this happen. Thank you we so talked very about much. It. We talked about it, man. I reached out to you. That's it. The man came by the shop. He said, we're going to make it happen That's in 2021. It. In 2020, what? Yeah, because we got we we got started talking in December of last year. I don't know was if it, it was November? a chat. It was more so you had your marching orders for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's a persistent man, right here. <laughs> hey, look, I do whatever I can to get people on That's the show. Right. That's and like right. We were talking before. That man is you're serious. Not gonna, you're not going to leave me hanging. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not an option. I looked up on my phone and said, hey, man, I'll call you at 5. 5 15. You know, boy was like, hey, <laughs> you calling me or what? Hey. <laughs> I'm calling. I'm saying, Let me call this guy, man. Very persistent. I like that about you, man. Hey, I've that's... been a big follower of yours. So well, thank you. Congratulations I... on your success, man. I appreciate that. I, no problem. I truly do. I'm, it's nice to hear people say that something that's being done in the local community is Correct. reaching people. You know, Correct. I'm glad to hear it's reaching people and I'm glad it's actually making, you know, a right. sliver of an impact. And yes, I am persistent. If you know me, you know I'm going to make it happen, whatever I got to do. Absolutely. And to be honest, man, your show doesn't speak to a specific demographic. It's across the board, you know, and yeah. I got to give you credit for that. Um, normally, <clears throat> I when I first saw your work, I came across you last year. I was like, okay, pretty cool, nice song, whatever catchy song. And I started paying attention to your guests. You just want good stories, man. You just want good folks doing good work in the community. You don't care if they got polka dots on them. You really do a great effort, I think, in my opinion, digging, doing your homework, seeing a specific type to that's going to, you know, resonate with your brand and audience. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. man. So thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Awesome. I'm, I'm, it's whenever someone when says that to me, it's like, I'm, I, I struggle with taking, you know, good, I get it. positive feedback. I get I'm like, it. I'm am not I really doing something brother. like that? But I, I'm not gonna I, appreci- I appreciate yeah. you saying that it's yeah. reaching and it's going across the board because that's what I'm, I'm here to share local entrepreneurs, right. sharing local stories. That's right. And everyone's unique. Mm-hmm. Every single person is unique right. and individual. So right. with you, you do Southern Kofi. We do. So what is it? We do, man. It's a good question. <clears throat> we started out not being what you see now. Um, we started out originally a Southern Grind Cofe. And through my process, now mind you, I wasn't selling to a squirrel. And I got some work, paperwork from a company in Alabama called the Southern Grind Coffee House, ordering me to change my name, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> and I got some advice from some people in the legal field and just friends. Oh, they don't even, you know, don't worry about it, Richard. Months went by and I started gaining momentum as a company at Southern Grind Cofe and the plot thickened, if you will. And so after a, they shut my Instagram page down, I looked up one morning, it was just gone. Like, how did this happen? Like you didn't get like an email Dude, or anything. It, it was just I gone. got the email after okay. I looked, it was in the junk. Gotcha. And it was from Instagram or was it? It was from Instagram. Okay. Yep. It fell into the junk space. And they were saying, hey, based on the information we received from this company, you know, until further notice, we're going to do this, which is basically shut you down. If you get these folks to approve of you, sign off, then we could put you back on. But until then, this is what it is. And so from that point on, and I was out without Instagram for about a solid week. Okay. And I built up to about 4,000 followers. Which is impressive. This is impressive in terms of our corner of the world, and what we were doing, because our numbers didn't dictate our um, number of people. You say usually 4,000 followers, a pretty healthy number of followers. You do it from the grassroots approach. And, but our business wasn't, you know, representative of that. So anyway, after about a week, I got this young lady who t- <laughs> she told me, I said, look, I need some help. I need to rebrand. I need to finish this business and take the grind out. And we need to go about our business. How can we do that? She said, I, I got you. 
I've been doing <laughs> the internet and social media since I was four years old. Oh, she wow. was young, man. And she was like so 12. Put, her name was Nayar. <laughs> And she put all of the confidence in me. <laughs> and I was like, you know, where well, you're going to get it done. And she rebranded us to Southern Cofe. We were still unapologetically original. And that basically stands for the unapologetic is a term we use in our community, the black community, just being unapologetic about who you are. Your love as a black person, your love is your community, whether it's a soul fist or, hey, what's going on? Right. I love who I am. And there's nothing wrong with being representative of who you are. And it's, yeah. you're supposed to love yourself because sometimes... It's difficult to be representative of yourself in a space where sometimes you're not wanted or necessary. And so being unapologetic speaks to a lot of people. It's kind of an unspoken language, if you will. And the word original, because we were the original in terms of in that space in Scotlandville. And the term kofi is an original term. They took the word grind, but the secret sauce is the word kofi. That is a word created from the word coffee and cafe. So it creates the word kofi. Right. And so for me, that was the secret sauce. So we're Southern Kofi, unapologetically original. And so that's how we re- uh, how we got there. And that's who we are. Yeah. So. I lo- that's like you making fun of me for throwing up some <laughs> thumbs up and being goofy. I do, man. I told this guy, take a picture. And he goes all out. And, okay. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. But it's, it it's is cool. like, like you said, it's being true to who you are. It's just being you know? true and to who you are, It's just man. being you as you right. as you. Right. Which. <clears throat> One so, of you. From a small business standpoint, being a social, being on social media oh, and then mm-hmm. being attacked for being on social media and having your brand taken down because correct. like, hey, it's a naming conflict. Right. You know, when you're an entrepreneur and you're getting things off the ground, you raise a good following mm-hmm. and you're like, I'm doing things well. I'm doing things great within the social presence. Right. And then all of a sudden you hit this roadblock. That's all I had, man. Exactly. For, for advertising yeah. and for small businesses and young entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Social media is like the way, right? It's the way we make an impact. It's the way we reach an audience. It's the way to get the brand in front of people right. without spending gobs of cash. Right. And to be honest, I have to shoulder some of the culpability as well. I didn't do my homework and I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I saw them out there and I saw them on the radar along with several other people that use grind. And I was like, I thought I was good to go. Yeah. You know? Um, I probably should have dove deeper instead of wider with that, but I did not. And I learned a valuable lesson. You know, they can take a name away from you. And yes, I was probably some of the responsibility for that. And I accept that responsibility. <clears throat> but at the same time, what you have is what's for you. And man, if people believe in you and they know that you're coming from a good space, the right space, they're going to rock with you, man. And so for me, it said a lot about the handful of customers that we had at the time, the people that say, okay, we're going to consistently be here with you regardless. I mean, they talked about that, those people in Alabama like a dog, but I'm like, it was some of me too fast. Yeah, yeah. So what? <laughs> but, Damn them. But, but then again, Hell if we can throw no shade on Alabama, I mean, <laughs> why not, right? <laughs> exactly. Like any, any time, exactly. especially as, as an LSU bad. Tiger it's, fan. You I didn't know? look at that that way. As, I didn't as look an LSU that Tiger right. fan, we always. <laughs> it's a little like, saving hate going on, That's brother. it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Any time it's like, oh, Alabama. <laughs> they, they're Alabama and Florida. That's like the catch all for everything. And then like with the Super Bowl, it was a Florida man. That was the streak. <laughs> like they just play it, it was okay. they, they play into themselves you know and so it's right right in man. part That's yeah funny. you know doing your due diligence obviously we're, it, we're saying doing your due diligence is important it is don't miss that point <laughs> please don't you know but at the same time alabama come on guys <laughs> it is and what it, it is <laughs> and if you listen to the show and you live in alabama please oh, hit boy. me up let's oh, chat boy. Don't, i want to chat not on my time <laughs> <laughs> I don't we got like a caller that. coming in. Oh my God. <laughs> Southern grind. <laughs> right. Yeah. There was one guy that named his daughter Ali Bama. And I was down. Ali Bama. I saw that on one of the documentaries. I'm like, uh uh-uh. <laughs> This is too serious for me to mess around with, man. So, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so and you overcame that obstacle. We did. How oh, how long did. into the business did that hit you? Oh right around a year. Okay. Right around a year. Uh, their reasoning was, hey. You know, we're thinking about putting a space up in Baton Rouge and this and that and who shot John. And it was what it was, man. They were perfectly within their rights, <clears throat> you know, and it was what it was. Like I said, I had some strong people to rebuild the brand, not even better, but stronger. Right. And we just came back with a vengeance in our minds. It's like if we get the opportunity, if they just allow us to get back in the game, 
We're going to be throwing some fastballs. It's going to come hard and heavy, and uh, we're going to be here. And you did. We, we did. I man. mean, the, the did. beauty <clears throat> about a, a brick-and-mortar store, mm-hmm. you know, pre, pre-COVID and even with COVID, is you've, you've got this physical presence mm-hmm. that is – ever there regardless of the name on the building right you know it you, you right. could have southern grind cofe you could have southern cofe <laughs> but it's still there right and you still have that physical presence so mm-hmm. people saying oh there's a new name right that almost kind of sparks a little bit more interest same like, hey, issue, why'd man. you right. why'd you change your name and then mm-hmm. it gets that collaboration that communication <clears throat> Absolutely. and then even then the community is like wait somebody tried to step on your toes when you were mm-hmm. just doing something for yourself we want to support right. you right way more and yeah when you get into the conversation of protecting your name and protecting your rights right. and protecting the brand you've built, Correct. it's nice to look at it through their lens as well. You gotta respect they, that. Man. They built this company in Alabama. You they know, deserve every right. And man. for them to come in and say, hey, look, we're actually gonna take the time to go through the process because it's not it a simple expensive. process. It's it expensive. Tedious. And so it's for expensive. even yeah. as an entrepreneur, if there was another Patty G show that popped up, mm-hmm. A, they'd be on the show and we'd be hashing it out live. <laughs> but B, well, I, I'm not a violent person. So you say. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody takes my show name. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but just the fact of protecting what is yours. You feel violated. Exactly. And I, I, I see their perspective, especially saying, hey, look, we're thinking about expanding. Mm. Being from out of town, they may not be completely familiar with the right. geographical location of, of where you're at mm-hmm. in relation to maybe where they wanted to put their store up, mm. which is probably 10, 20 miles away. Yeah. Bro. Right. But at the same time, they saw it as not an attack necessarily, but hey, somebody's infringing on our name. Right. Let's put a stop to it. However, your name's come back. You're right. going strong and, and you've got some really cool things happening within, the, within your shop. We do, man. And so what you see right now is a culmination of Research, <clears throat> shut it down for a week to do more research to get it right. Um, I started out in the coffee shop business in 2000. Okay. And so I've been around the business in terms of the ownership side of it for a while. And when I opened this space up here, I barely had enough to do what you see now, right? <clears throat> so I was still thinking 2004 menu. Coffee, baked goods, lemonade here and there, a couple of smoothies, three or four smoothies. I had folks coming in, man. Hey, um, what's in that smoothie? Is this made with fresh fruit? Is this made with fresh veggies? And I stopped the show. <clears throat> I'm like, we need to re, re, re uh, evaluate how we do business here. And I called in a friend who's a vegan chef who's in that space. When we shut the um, shop down for about a week and a half, because I wanted to rebrand it, not necessarily when we open back up, but at least have some goals in terms of what we wanted to look like at the end of the day. And what you see now is the byproduct of that meeting from that day. And so we talked about everything from having vegan options, bringing in fresh fruit and vegetables, <clears throat> letting customers build their own smoothies, build their own salads, what have you. And so that's just how we got there. We had the coffee thing locked down. In my opinion, I was like, yeah, but I got great coffee. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no, what's in this smoothie? That's what you're here hey, for, brother, the coffee, I got the right? coffee, man. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, overall, coffee only uh, counts for about 12% of our sales, man. Wow. 12% of our sales, man. And it's not <laughs> – and it shocked me <clears throat> when I took a look at it one quarter, a couple of quarters ago. I was like, man, coffee is not even in the game. So somehow we've kind of done some programs to implement coffee to get that percentage up because it's such remind a great, people, it's such a great margin, man. The You're right, we sell brother, coffee. brother. It's such a great margin, and so we try to get those margin of things that make us, yeah. you know, work better at the We're end a, of the day, man. You're in a business, right? You make and a profit. so yeah, and so I can sell the same salad for eight dollars, and I know across town it's being sold for fifteen. It says something to think about, right? I know I'm leaving money on the table, but at the same time, I'm servicing someone that may not have an opportunity to get a $15 salad. I mean, right. Well, and on. with with your store in particular, mm-hmm. I feel like just getting people in the door is step one. You That's know, a process, man. There's, <clears throat> it, you're not trying to get them in because you've got one product that you're like, hey, this we have to sell this one thing and right. we have to make this happen. Right. You're like, come in the door, come right. sit down. Just take it in. Check out our ambiance. Check right. out our vibe. Check out what we got right. going. Right. And... <clears throat> 
there's a whole variety of stuff within the store. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just yeah. one. It's not like you're walking into a CC's, right? Correct. And you're not walking in saying, Correct. hey, can I get, you know, a coffee? Mm -hmm. And can I get a, a uh, brownie whatever it is? Yeah. I, don't, I don't really even go. To <laughs> <laughs> I drink my coffee from my pot at the house. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if I go anywhere, I just get a plain you're latte. You're not my customer, brother. That's right. That's right. But well, yeah. At coffee the, and a bagel. Yeah. Yeah, CC's. exactly. It's it's the basic coffee order. But right. you, you've got. Now, they have the luxury a, of a brand of doing that. Yeah. You know. And, right. and again, the margins are great. But Absolutely. you're building a staple in the community. Right. You're not just building the next, you know coffee shop you're of building course. a place where people can go and do man. exactly and so many people are behaving in the spirit of a cafe and don't know it they call it a coffee house and a cafe or a cafe and coffee and that's how i actually came up with the name like man all this struggling with the name so a southern ground coffee house and cafe it just didn't roll off the tongue it just didn't you know i was like we have to come up with something and so it just kind of hit me yeah. and so for me so many people operate as a cafe they don't know it but they are you know and so we just try to offer everything that within that radius takes you X amount of miles to get to. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So. It's you're, you've created this unique atmosphere. It is unique. This unique man, space. I'll be honest. Yeah. You know that it's went like, I know whenever I went over there, mm -hmm. it was like, wow. Like I walked in, I was like, this is not like a, a normal coffee. Totally shop. No, it was, it, it, it caught no. me off guard almost but in, a, in the yeah. best way possible. Correct. In the best way possible. I walked right. in, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. The outside didn't help. <laughs> I'll be, <laughs> let's and, be honest. And if my, <laughs> my, my truck is not the easiest to park, so that was right. also another feat. Outside didn't help. I, I'm, I'm <clears> convinced <throat> when I, uh, what, so what street is that that falls along the, uh, the railroad tracks? What street is that? Uh, Directly scenic in front of your highway. shop. Is that scenic? Oh, the, the no, one, and uh, directly in front Scotland, of your shop. Scotland Avenue. Scotland Avenue. Yeah. I'm convinced 40 people hated me because I probably made an illegal <laughs> U-turn. <laughs> they thought you were up to something. Oh, for sure. Like I'm I'm driving, like, wait a second. I'm looking at my they GPS. Thought you like, was up to something, I'm like, wait, I'm passing up. And so I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to man turn at around. Night, brother. And everybody's no. like, wait, what is wait, what is happening? Like people start I got what you need. Yeah, Come people, see me. people start slowing down, and I'm like, oh gosh. I'm like, I'm it's not I'm, bad. I'm trying to turn around. I'm putting in reverse. I'm like backing up and Reception, just stopping baby. traffic. And then I come and I park in front of your shop and I get out and they're like, who's this dude in slacks oh, and a button? <laughs> it was dark too, man. Yeah. It was dark out. And, and then I, I, I walked in and I was like, this is, this is a cool space. Right, man. There's a certain easiness about it and a certain sense of calm. We've worked with the city before because it has been considered a safe space, if you will, outside somewhat, quote unquote, chaos, if you're not used to that environment or setting. <clears throat> and for me, it's just a comfortable space for me. Um, those people have literally been the gatekeepers, if you will. You know, I've literally come to my space one morning where such and such, it was a Police happened around here. So just be careful. Just, you know, they're always looking out for us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, somebody may have been up all night. Say, Horatio, just be careful. There's a couple of kids, da 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 da, da something going on or whatever. It's a community. You know, right. And when the mayor comes by and she stops by, she moves people to tears in that community. Believe it or not, man, it just amazes me uh, what we've been able to accomplish in that space the expectations that are lowered when you initially walk in and how it heightens to, <laughs> do you have a bathroom here? <laughs> like we have a restroom, you know? Yeah. And so man, for us in that, that property has been purchased over the last year as well okay. to a young, um, aspiring visionary. And he's going to do some unique things with it as well. So we won't have that facade issue much longer, right? Rolling to this year, as I'm told, it's told to me. Yeah. So and for when me, I was, it's going to When I was there, up. I was seeing they had signs up about upcoming projects that was happening. Of course. And so there's a lot, of there's course. a lot of improvements happening in that area. Correct. Correct, man. And if you're going to be a steward of the culture or a keeper of the culture, be what you're going to say, what you're going to be. Right. Yeah. And so for me, it was honestly about, I knew that the location was terrible. I knew the outside looked terrible. I knew it looked dangerous and unpresentable. But in my mind, I thought that with my experience and abilities in terms of not getting shaken by that, if I could just get people here, we'll figure it out. And that goes back to that social media presence. Right. There's exactly. not many photos of you posting from never, the outside. Never, brother. It's saying, hey. No. But it, to me, I love a good, I love a good, for the lack of a better term, hole in the wall place. It is. You know, it is. pulling up, like, for example, I used to work at Roberto's River Road Restaurant 
off of in Sunshine, Louisiana. Oh boy. When you pull up, it looks like a shack. <laughs> right. Like I'm not gonna it, it looks like a legitimate shack. And By design? Like, yeah, it's an okay. old, it's an old, um, Fair. like it built in the 1800s. Mine wasn't by design. Bro. And, 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 but it's still, they were able to take it and turn the inside to the real gym, gotcha. which is what you're doing. Gotcha. You're taking and gotcha. making that real gym through right. the doors. Exactly. And so like when I walked in, I was like, what is this place? Mm -hmm. Like, and it's from your social media perspective, like, mm -hmm. Hey guys, just come in here. That's right. Come in here and it, see what we're about. And I could not put my finger on what we truly were. I was visiting my girlfriend in Houston. <clears throat> excuse me, we went to a fairly new coffee shop that had opened and the owner came and just, we just were chatting and he would say, well, there's a lot of walking traffic by your space. And no, there are a lot of um, apartment buildings. Uh, no, sir. He said, well, there's a university. I said, well, yeah, but they're in COVID now. He said, well, how's business? I said, great. <laughs> he looks at me, you have a destination. <laughs> and I didn't realize it, man. I think I, I would been struggling. Mm -hmm. To define who we were, obviously outside of a cafe, but we're a destination, if you will. And people really literally come by in that place and say, I'm so glad I made it here. Yeah. You know, outside of our normal customer, which our normal customer is 80 percent African-American women, um, highly educated or pursuing a higher education, um, got their act together um, and 20 percent um, Caucasian. And you can somewhere fit 15, 20 percent black male in there with the same credentials as the black woman. And so outside of that normal rotation of folk, people are always coming. I'm so glad I found this place. I've been trying to get here. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to get here since you opened. You know, we've been open a damn near three years. Really? Yeah. Now we were down for COVID. Yeah. For about uh, seven uh, months. Seven months. Okay. Yeah. Eight months, eight months, around eight months. I'm sorry. But that's what the mindset of people like, God, I'm so glad I came here. Mm -hmm. And it's everything I thought it would be. I love it here. I'm like, you haven't drank nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like. It's that ambiance. Thank you. And so for us, man, we tried to create that. And I hope it captures people as much as it has captured you. And when people refer to our space, the energy, the hope that it breathes in not necessarily them, but the community as well. It speaks volumes, man. Absolutely. <laughs> and so to get more into the details of yes. what you've got going on, mm -hmm. you have what has been really interesting in my eyes, specifically, mm -hmm. you've got a podcasting space. Correct. Which there's really not a type of space around the community Correct. in the Baton Rouge <clears throat> area where this North Baton Rouge or here okay. that's available for that. Correct. I mean, as you see, we bring all this in. You do. Like we, you all do. this is brought right. is brought in here. There's not mm -hmm. a set up space. There's not a set up studio per Correct. se for for people to walk in and record. Mm -hmm. Or if they are, it hit me up because I'm not I'm not really aware of <laughs> right. a lot of places that do they this. They aren't. After our research, man, they, and they they aren't. You've created one. Yeah. You know, I but can, it still uh, has that, like you said, <clears throat> that cafe feel. Right. It's not yeah. like so studio ish. Right. That yeah. you're in a booth. Right. And how that came about, man, I got hit up right after I got back from COVID, just trying to get things together. I wasn't open, <clears throat> pretty well-known person in the community here in the city, um, respected person, called me, said, Harish, I want to have a conversation with you. I said, OK, dope, man. What's up? He came by the space. <clears throat> and like I said, I was closed and he, we had a conversation in the little back room. He said, I want to do a podcast here. I said, OK. And in my mind, people had shot some pilots there before and it just didn't land right it was just aesthetics weren't ready lighting was terrible and it just in my mind i'm thinking sure you yeah. know whatever we'll give it a shot right <clears throat> and he said well someone's gonna sponsor it and so when he said that the light went off like somebody yeah they're gonna get the microphones they're gonna get this for us and that for us i said okay and so where you see that podcast space now there was just furniture there a sofa and two chairs and it was a cool space with a raw hot um, rug, but it was the most underutilized space in the Kofi, hands down. People did not sit there. They walked by the old cool space, you know, whatever. Very rarely would people sit there. And so by the time that young man walked out of that office and walked through that furniture and walked out, I already had it in my mind, we're going to do this. So I called up a good friend of mine who runs Gift Time Productions, really talented brother, I said, hey, man, I need to speak with you. I have a concept and an idea, but I don't know how to get home on this. Can you help me out? He dropped by. 
I said, this is what I would like to do, make this an actual podcast studio. However, I wanted to be this, this, and this. And what that looked like for us, I wanted to be sleek. I wanted to be fluid enough where we could still operate the, the Kofi while this is actually going on simultaneously. And whatever microphones we need to get to make that happen, where we can have this closed, whatever, whatever that looks like for us. I want a backdrop and I want this and I want an interface where we can say, okay, I got you. And so he got the equipment. We laid it out. And that's the product, what you see now. And so we were able to put together a program where you can literally log on to Kofi Communications and reserve your space, you know? Yeah. And so that's really how we got there. And after I did my research, I don't want to say in the world, but definitely in the United States, we're the only functioning studio podcast within a Kofi and a coffee shop. So I love it. There may be others. Right. But as of that time. With, with, within that particular <laughs> within that realm. that time, brother, yeah. it was us. We were original in that one. Yeah, so. which, which when you look at a marketing perspective of course. or you look at a, a young entrepreneur perspective, mm -hmm. podcasts are starting to shape shift mm -hmm. into the go-to form of brand building. Right. The go-to form of advertising. Mm -hmm. Because we, as a, a human we run so much now. Even with COVID, we're all running crazy. Do you ever feel like, not to cut you off, but you yeah, ever feel like you're on the internet and you feel rushed? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, it's, it's, <laughs> you, you, it's, you got all time war ratio. You're here all day. Why are you feeling rushed? It's, it's just what you said. It's because in our heads, we feel like we're not moving fast enough. Right. And right. collectively, we've been able to put that out there with social media. Mm -hmm. And so now we've got this comparative nature about ourselves that if we're not going faster than person X, mm -hmm. we're falling behind. Right. And we have right. kind of gone away from the concept of patience mm. and that stuff takes time. Stuff yeah. takes time to grow and build and become what you want it to be. Right. The best overnight success is 10 years in the making. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is. 20 years in my exactly. case, brother. But like yeah. with, <clears throat> with podcasting, the form of content that you can create mm, and the powerful. medium that you can use to reach your particular customer, Correct. your patron, whomever you're trying to reach, right. it's a way that has just kind of blown up in the most recent couple. It's like the couple couple years. It's, I didn't think it was fly by night. Yeah. But I thought it would get to a place where it's almost like flat screen TVs. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing them. I said, it'll be years before I can get that in my home affordably. It happened in three years. And now you've got a space that people can reserve <clears throat> without right. having to go buy all the equipment. It's expensive. Even, if, even <clears throat> oh, it's very... <laughs> God is you, you, you can ask anybody on Flashbang right. Folks, and they can tell you. People around us with beards, ponytails, <laughs> spotlights, drop lights. It's a scene. Yeah. Yeah. Like this this for, is not for the for the faint of a wallet, if right. you will. Yeah. For for, for those <laughs> on the Facebook Live, for example, they're only seeing the right. two microphones in front of us of and the backdrop. Of course. They're not seeing camera one, camera two, camera three. Light yeah. one, light two, light three. It's the same. All family. around us. It's and the same. All yeah. the setup. I mean, Correct. it takes two hours to get the setup perfected. I, I feel if I move in the wrong direction, <laughs> I've you're going to get a look. Someone's career. You're going to get a look from Brent over <laughs> Life, there. He's going to be like just hands the in the so air. Over here. <laughs> I'm ruining something. <laughs> I don't want to move. <laughs> so, yeah, man. And you've created a space right. that allows people to test it nonetheless. Exactly. If man. they're not sure how the podcast is going to go, they can at least for use it for a testing space. You can literally come into the space, reserve the space through Kofi Communications, reserve that space. If you don't have a laptop or a computer to record, we can do that for you. We'll send you your recording literally for about between $50 and $60 an hour. We have 30 minute intervals as well, but I mean, that's about as rock bottom as it gets. And you can put your tripod up for your camera, for your phone. You can have different angles, however you want to do that. Or you can say, okay, I want someone to do the production and the audio and you can hire our people. Yeah. Shoot. So for us, we wanted to make it affordable. And you've seen our equipment, man. Yeah. You see what we're working with. We want to give first class stuff as best we can. And so we just wanted to make it affordable and people have something to say. That's what we call that unapologetically outspoken. So people have a lot to say. The reality of it is, is are you willing to put it on wax? Right. 
Yeah. Are you willing to put it out there and it's there forever? Exactly. It's, it's out there. You can't bring it back, brother. Yeah, it's, it's out there. It's safe <laughs> somewhere. The same noise you've been talking, man, f- to me, mm-hmm. to your friends. Are you willing to put it on wax? Yeah. And if you are, and if you have something to say, or if you have a topic or a brand or whatever you want to do in our interview, hit us up. Right. You know, but one thing I know for sure, you can't bring that back. Absolutely. Radio, you may run your commercials. It'd be hard to go to the station and get your commercial back. But you were on episode three of this podcast. 50 years from now, it'll still be there. And that's, that's what really I, powerful. That's what I love about it. Yeah. Like, I love the fact that in 20, 30 years, my kids can go back. Oh, yeah. And look at their their dad with this, you know, mm-hmm. really close haircut right now. I didn't coming have to work fresh. close in mine. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> you, sat in the, you sat in the, in the chair and said, make it stick, brother. <laughs> that's, that's what he did. <laughs> make it stick. <laughs> that's right. And it's, so I, 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 walked, I walked into the salon and it was like, all right, I, I can't feel anything. I walked out and had a breeze See, come over my step, head. The first thing you walk in the salon, I walk into a barber shop. Brother. That's right. Big difference. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what to call them, man. I don't know. What do you what do you call yeah, them? I call them barbershop, man. <laughs> barbershop. Got right. it. Yeah. I walked into the barbershop. You walked into the barbershop. Yes, I mean, I make it stick, brother. That's it. And that's what we got. <laughs> it looks good on you, man. Well, thank you. Thank but, you. But, uh, but my kids can come back and look at it. Absolutely. And man. their my grandkids can come back so and look powerful, at it. The, the fact that it's documenting <laughs> the process. Like Real for, time. for me, it's yeah. documenting the process. You know, you can right. go back to episode <clears throat> one of my show. Yeah. And then go all the way through. It's it's a lot, people. Um, it you is. can go. It's it'll take up three days of your life. It will because it's you an hour, hour out there, show. Man. And we're coming up on some, seventy episodes. You got some content out there, man. But it gives that perspective of at that point in time mm-hmm. who I was. Right. For my kids to look back on, you know, if when you when you look at it in that sense of documenting your life, mm-hmm. you can do it with a voice memo. If you're like, yeah. you know, I want to come in instead of doing. If you're not a good writer. And right. if you're not good in front of a camera, mm-hmm. but you love to talk, right. pull out your phone and record voice memos. Yeah. You may not ever publish it, but saving that for your kids to listen to, like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, my dad got home from work on a random Tuesday and just went on this the hour long tangent. Of yeah. That book got published after that man passed away. That man's mama walked into a publishing Mm-mm. and handed him that. That man was long gone. That's one of the great reads of today, yeah. right? So, like you said, it can happen. You don't know who it's going to touch or inspire, but that's just the power of it. And so, for me, I do applaud you because the way you went about, you do have a lot of content out there. But what I've noticed is just your growth from that first episode to where we are now. And when I spoke with you about it, hey, man, why don't you come do some away games over here at the shop? And said, well. I'll be honest with you, it's going to be a busy year for me. And it just states the growth because you were kind of in different spaces in other episodes and stuff. Mm-hmm. And just the consistency, how you've come about the business of it, how you guys have grown, what you've done. It looks different from episode one, two to where you are now. Yeah. And that just constitutes to the growth, man. And so congrats. Again. Well, well, thank you for that. But it, it, it goes to show that anybody with enough willpower and determination yeah. and patience mm-hmm. You know, I didn't come in episode one and call on Flashbang and say, hey, I want to make the investment Mm -hmm. and do this. Mm -hmm. Some people do. I didn't have an audience. I still don't technically really have a huge, massive audience like some people who with businesses, if you're a business in the community and you've been around 10, 20 years, you can start a podcast talking about your business and people will come to it naturally because you've got that name. Right. Building it from the ground up takes time. It does. And you're giving people in the community the ability to test, to run a test pilot. See how to it me works. It's so powerful, man. And, right. And if they love the space and they love how it works, right. keep it going. Right. Until you're right. at the point where you may never want to leave the space. Right. From a podcasting perspective, right. because if you can get people to then come in your shop and then right. they've got coffee. They've got right. salads, got man. they've got smoothies, smoothies. Right. you've got I, all I, types I of I products. Both. We got you. Yeah. You know, and so for me, man, it was not only, and honestly, where I got that portion of it from about kind of a operating within that space, Ralph Lauren has a shop in New York at one of these high fashion 
um, <clears throat> stores. And he's got an actual coffee shop in it. And every once in a while, they'll do a virtual, well, an audio podcast, but I can hear everything in the background. Mm-hmm. The coffee shop going, <sighs> the espresso brewing, you know, grinding. And I thought, that's just pretty neat how they did that. And so I always wanted that muffledness in the background with that. And so that kind of inspired me as well. So Yeah, and that's when, when, when I called my buddy Cody over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was in December of last year. Mm-hmm. He was like, okay. He's like, so like, are we going to like do be doing this in a studio? Like, <laughs> like what, what, like, what are What's you after, on? you know, That's like, right. are we going to be, you know, right. getting everything noise canceling and pristine and perfect. That's right. That's and right. the first episode of the year, we recorded a point Marie mm-hmm. and we had 18 wheelers driving by. That's right. And you know, he's like, dude, we're not gonna be able to get it all out. I'm like, That's fine. That's right. I'm like that's fine. The the, the point concern. of right, right. The, the, point, of the, the point of my that's show, right. at least, is I want to have that natural feel. That's what I right for it's for me and from my perspective. It's yeah. I would rather relate to somebody when they know it's organic, when mm-hmm. they know it's real, and they know it's raw. Right. For you know, for me coming in and saying, hey, you know, Horatio, let's go into a studio, right. and let's record six takes of that podcast, and right. let's see how it comes out. Mm-hmm. I would have it's done like, it. It's, but it would have been a little stale for based on how I, you came to me in terms of your personality exactly. and vice versa. Man. Exactly. And so for me, I tell folks all the time, this isn't your um, normal space. Mm-hmm. It's fluid in terms of how it looks and all of that. But there's going to be some a little noises here and there, a little faint background music and a little um, blender going and noise and folks talking. That's fine. That's the beauty of it, because if I take this and go edit all that stuff out and this, we can do it at home. Yeah. There's no value in it. <clears throat> you know, it does nothing greater for me if I interview someone and say, hey, we're live at Southern Coast, Fade the Heart of Scotlandville. You know, we're unapologetically original. Exactly. Let's run it. You know, and, so for me, it gets me a rush. 100%. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and knowing that's your intro every oh, time man. people listen to that, it's like, great. Oh, man. You know, yeah. I've... <laughs> we, we've we, we've had some episodes we've had to stop midway because stuff just happens and we're like hang I on coming live <laughs> this is happening you know and just right. it, it's nice right. to have that feel it does of man. that authenticity of just yep. like you said being unapologetically original man it's nothing wrong with it man it's not about being one of one you know and uh, you know you can't recreate yourself so to speak man so. right it's <clears throat> you are who you are yep yeah and when people try to put on and you're this, not for everybody no <laughs> You're not for everybody, man. And that, yeah. you know what? That's okay. It's, I want to say something, but yeah, you're right. It's nothing you, wrong with that, man. You, you, <clears throat> you can't, when you try to spend the time pleasing everyone, someone is still going to seem to it be just overlooked. just lands terribly, man. Yeah. So being, really like you does. said, being yourself, right. being authentic and true mm-hmm. to who you are right. is going to build you from way further than trying oh, yeah. to it's please than trying to please the crowd. It's right? gonna take you further, man. So, but within that, your shop, it's not just podcasting. It's not just coffee and smoothies. You've got some other creative stuff happening inside the space, right? What else man. is happening <clears throat> in there, man? For us, I a mentor came. Well, he wasn't a mentor at the time. He came in. He said, "Man, you have profiting centers within this space." He had a hotel background. He had a franchising background. And so what he saw, he's like, let's do this. Let's mark out a day when we get together, go over the vision in terms of other ways to monetize things that are within the shop. <clears throat> well, I didn't see it. You got to understand, I'm making $8 a day. And I'm like, I just don't, whatever. He comes in, he says, look, let's take these three shelves and let's add vendors to it. Let's make it unique in what each vendor can provide and make it a self-kiosk checkout, meaning they can have their own iPad, their own self-checkout system. And that's one. Let's take these. You ever been to a coffee shop and they have these sleeves that go on the cups? Mm -hmm. Always had my name on them, Southern Cofe. Let's raise that up and let's add advertisement to that. That's another form of that. And we're probably about three months booked out from that, Right which means we're constantly calling and say, hey, would you like to be on our advertising sleeves? You know, and this and that. Sometimes people come to us, but we definitely get on the lines and make calls. And so that's kind of a monetize, monetization <clears throat> of what we do in the space as well. So for us, man, it's just about extracting every opportunity. And I'll tell you this about North Baton Rouge. 
and it's unique from a car wash or a wing space or a burger space, we do something from what people didn't think could be done is we have people with a quote unquote disposable income that come in and spend money. We have a high ilk of person that comes in that shop and that spends money and good people doing good and great things within their community and within their respected fields. And so for us, we've grown from that three, four dollars a day to hopefully hitting six figures throughout a full year. Whenever that's going to be, probably in 2021, we're going to try to do a full year, but hitting six figures. And to me, that's a hell of a feat for us. Absolutely. Because we intentionally went there knowing it was going to be the long game. We intentionally went there knowing that people said we couldn't do it. And a victory to me was just being able to survive. So not only are we able to survive, we're able to thrive and inspire and move forward and hopefully duplicate it other times. Yeah. It's the, the stepping stone to the it next, is. The yeah, next absolutely, phase. Absolutely, man. It's not a traditional way of doing it. Usually when you seek out a location to do something, man, you're looking for high traffic area, critical mass of people, et cetera, et cetera. I did the exact opposite because it wouldn't have gotten done if right. you were doing that formula based on that. And, and it goes back to that destination setting. Absolutely. That, that setting of people are coming <clears throat> here to come here. I <laughs> thought it was going to people be coming here for coffee, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, people were just coming there just to come check in at this quote unquote destination space or whatever you want to call <laughs> it, man. And so for me, that's what made it unique. I never envisioned that. Yeah. And I, I love that. And it's, I, I'm now looking down at, at my time and I'm realizing we, we're at the point where we start wrapping up the show. <laughs> man, you want me to wrap? No, oh, I mean, hey, go for it. I don't wrap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said wrapping up the show. Wrapping okay. up the show. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, you've created this uniquely original space. Yeah, man. And so within that, you've gone through a lot of ups and downs, I'm yeah, sure, a absolutely. lot of roadblocks and mm -hmm. such, mm -hmm. which have probably turned into lessons learned along the way. It's all, man. Teaching moments. So what are three teachable moments or um, lessons you've learned along the way? Be sure that when you do have these quote unquote visions, you have to be mentally prepared to understand what failure may happen. But Understand that there's failure within failure. You're going to have to get up. And sometimes those lessons and failures are public. Sometimes they're private. But at the same time, man, regardless, you got to get up still. You got to move on forward. The sun will rise. <laughs> Tomorrow will be there. Take your ass whooping and keep it moving, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And another one is just really simple, man. Nothing just happens. You know? Yes. Um. I knew that it would take a person of either a flagship space or coffee shop to come there or some person with enough experience to come there and stay the course. So absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> so what is something that you did as a kid mm -hmm. that you wish you could still do today had no one stopped you? Um, that's a great question, <laughs> which I'm not prepared for. Man. <laughs> um, Man, something I did as a kid. Honestly, man, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. I set out to be a business person at the age of about 12 years old, other than playing professional football. And I went out for college and they thought I was the football. So other than that, brother. <laughs> yeah, put him right there with the football. <laughs> so for me, man. I just set my mind. I said, I thought it would be cool to be a business person, control your narrative. Of course, I wouldn't say it in those terms then, but that's all I ever really wanted to be. Um, when I got the opportunity, I was with a corporation for about seven or eight years and I had to make a decision and I just chose to go and try to do my own thing in 2000. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And that in and of itself is mm -hmm. a powerful decision to make. The, de the decision to right. step out of that mm -hmm. safety net, right. that comfort zone right. is daunting and really halting. People just stop <clears throat> dead in their tracks when that decision comes up. Because it can go very bad very quickly. Absolutely. You know, and some people do not recover. I'll tell you this story, man. I had some coffee quickly. I'll, I, I had some coffee shops in Alexandria <clears throat> and I wanted to buy back one of the shops that I had. And the gentleman say, well, no, man, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to go ahead and run the shop and oh, I'll buy this. I said, wait a minute, good luck. If you ever need anything, give me a call. 
And one of my faults is that sometimes I make it look too easy, but it's very difficult, man. Based on the information I gathered from the situation, this particular person realized that this wasn't an easy task. It's not. Based on with life issues, this guy committed suicide. And so for me, I say it is not a game when it comes to trying to run a business. I mean, you get swamped in a lot of spaces, emotionally, physically, financially, man. And if you do not have a support group, you're in a lot of trouble. First, other than yourself, but have somebody that believes in you, man. You need somebody to pat you on your back, say, hey, Horatio, man, it's going to be all right. I believed in you from the very beginning. We'll get home. Let's look at what we have out in front of us. How can we get home? You just need that, bro. I don't give a damn how smart you are. I don't give a damn how cool you think you are, how fly you think you are how much money you have, brother. If you don't have that one person that can pat you on your back and say, hey, bro, I got you. I believe in you, man. I saw it when you saw it. You won't last. Yeah. You will not last and you won't be your best you. And a hundred percent that comes in. You won't. And and that person is not a particular, they they don't fall within a certain category. No, they do not, man. It's not like, oh, that's gotta be your mom. That's gotta be your brother. That's gotta be your sister, your father. A lot of times it's not family, bro. Yeah. And and at a hundred percent, you know, it's, you know, I can, I can think of, you know, a handful of people that Uh, to me are the, the fact of, you know, when I go to them and say, Hey, what do you think of this? And they're Hmm. like, okay, it's kind of off the wall, but I see what you've got going on Mm -hmm. and I see the, the thought behind it. Correct. And I think if you, maybe take a xyz approach that's right and dial it back from your your patrickified uh-huh. <laughs> mentality <laughs> that's you right. might be able to make it work <laughs> right <laughs> and so it's like okay but it's also that feedback mm-hmm. that feedback of okay it could be a good idea right because i've got that one person mm-hmm. i've got or i've got those two people that's you know, right. or else i've got that half a person that i text that's it, every wednesday saying hey <laughs> What do you think of this? And they say, you're crazy, man. (laughs) Don't do it. But every now and again, they might say, okay, that's feasible. (laughs) I got them. Yeah. I got them. And and every entrepreneur needs something like that. You know, and and if if you're an entrepreneur that doesn't have that support system, you need, reach out to me. Heck, reach out to me and I'll talk to you. Like I'm not far, man. You, you, yeah. You need somebody to either say, hey, that's a bad idea, comma, but... Let's look at something else. Right. Let's just, look further into it. Let's right. not just totally throw it off the rails. No. Let's bring it in and let's really talk about it. That's right, man. Because we may be able to get home on this thing, man. Yeah. And it, we may be able to make it work, just not in the initial right. idea that you had harvested. Right. You just need some tweaking, man. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with tweaking. Yeah, not to set our eyes on it. Just, yeah. That's it. So within everything you've done, mm-hmm. You've been in the community. Yeah. You're creating a strong presence in the Mm -hmm. community. What do you love about Baton Rouge? Um, I'm not from Baton Rouge. I'm from Alexandria. I started my coffee shop journey in Alexandria. Had the opportunity to come up here to the law center, and I ran in the law center with the coffee shop for seven years. CC had been there prior to X amount of years. But what I absolutely love about Baton Rouge, what Alexandria could not give me, a strong base of highly educated black people, which I can lean into. Um, For me, that university looked the exact same as when I went there in the early 90s. And for me, I just wanted to make a difference. My initial business plan, Patrick, was in 1997. And I wanted to put a coffee shop at every HBCU. I ended up being in Alexandria, so that's where my journey started. So now the journey starts now in terms of possibly revisiting that and going forward with that. But for me, I love when I see nothing against my city. It's just that Baton Rouge has more strength in numbers and they know that and they can push forward and push ideas and things forward that Alexandria can't do right now. And I wanted to be in a community that I could support and do that. And I felt if I didn't do it then. I was not going to have the opportunity to do it. I couldn't see myself. If that opportunity never happened at the law center, I couldn't see myself getting here. And so when that happened, I said, this is my term to get here. And so what I love about Baton Rouge, and I'm willing to bet anybody in the world on a Saturday night, on a Saturday, actually a Friday leading up to a Saturday game, whether it's at Tiger Stadium, at at Mumford Stadium, at Southern, 
if you find a better atmosphere, come tap me on the shoulder and show me. <laughs> you ain't going to find it, bro. And so for me, the energy and the electricity that's in the city, man, I can't get enough of it. Not too many things move and get me off my couch. Jazz, a couple of things here and there, a good <laughs> cigar, bro. Night out with the lady. That gets me off my couch, man. When it's time Saturday night or Saturday in Baton Rouge, two of the best schools, you got the most prominent historically black university in the world and one of the badasses football teams in the country. It don't get no better than that, man. Yeah. It don't get no better than that. Yeah. And as 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 an alum alumnus of LSU, that's, that's right. I stand with you on there that. You <laughs> there you go. I stand with you on those there Saturdays, go, those game days. It's unbelievable, man. And I, I didn't think people could carry on like oh that. Oh my gosh. And it's unbelievable, man. And then it's Southern, we cut up so bad, man. And this LSU is unbelievable. And, unbelievable. And that's just outside of the stadium. <laughs> that's be, outside of the stadium. Inside, you got man. you got to think about that. Right, we're talking about have, this. And we're talking <laughs> from the outside looking in. When you, you get tell. in there and you get into Death Valley and you get Absolutely. into Tiger Stadium or you man, get into Southern Stadium, it's like, oh my when gosh. When the band comes in that stadium, and I kid you not, women might as well throw panties out there. It's just that electric, and it's a scene. And I'm telling you, we have the best band in the world. I love that band. I love when they come into the stadium, man. There's no better feeling. And I equate the feeling to when they come down and do the Tiger Walk, I think it's called. Yep. When the band plays that. Right? If you don't have earphones and not prepared for that, go home. I get Cause you won't you won't be able to relive that moment again. It's Look, I just got <laughs> chills. I get chills you, man, thinking about it. It is absolutely electric. Oh my god! In the city, yes. and don't let the weather be good. Yeah, you have Alabama. Yeah, you have Florida. Yeah, you have Jackson State. But they don't have two schools. Yeah, that merge like that together. That's the beauty and the magic of Baton Rouge, man. Right there, hundred percent. Yeah. So for the. The, the final question yeah, of the man. show, what can I do to help you? What can you do to help me, man? Keep supporting me, man. And here's a little bit of a nugget. We're going to be expanding our brand. Okay. We'll be downtown, man, inside of the market, um, Red Stick Market, man, starting at the end of the month. Okay. Um, and so it's just an <sighs> opportunity for us to expand our brand. It won't be our full, <laughs> full podcast thing and all that stuff going on. You know, those kiosks, just like they have on Saturday morning with the market, we'll be inside an atrium with everybody else and doing our thing six days a week. And we're just as excited about that opportunity from this little shop that came from $3 a day to expand over here to downtown. That's what it's all about. And if you ever wanted to believe, just look up our story and you'll, you'll get home emotionally on it. So, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Horatio, for coming on the show. It's a pleasure, it, brother. Man. Thank Appreciate you. you taking the time. I'm glad Absolute we're able to make pleasure. this happen. Absolute pleasure, brother. And uh, for those listening to the show in whatever platform you're hearing it, whether it be Facebook Live, YouTube, or this, the actual podcast itself, I appreciate you. And I know the guests do as well. So thank you all so very much for tuning in. Um, and I just appreciate everything you've done. So without further ado, I'm Patty G of the Patty G Show. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. And y'all have a good night. And for those listening, this show is brought to you by Alvarez Construction. They build a lot more than just a home for you to live in. They build a place for you to reach your goals, reach your dreams, and raise your family. They build the next step for you in your life in whatever way that may be. So if you're looking for a home, you're looking for a place to live, a community, check out Alvarez Construction as they are a great sponsor of the show. Thank you all so very much and good night.